Welcome to Sit Down News. Today, I'm going to be talking about a story that I wrote back in December. It, it was titled, Known Liar Slips in Lucchese's Back Door. The story starts out about an FBI agent named Jacqueline Jack Garcia, who was handpicked for an extremely dangerous assignment back in the early 2000s, I believe. It was the infiltrate the Gambino crime family. And he went into that assignment using an undercover moniker named Jack Falcone. And he did ultimately succeed in accomplishing that mission, his task. It turned out to be one of the most fruitful infiltra infiltrations of organized crime since Joe Pistone penetrated the Bonanno family back in the 70s. And as people know, that's where they came up with the movie Donnie Brasco, and that was his undercover name as well. The, the end result was that um, the Gambino family took about 32 uh, arrests of its members and associates. This story is about Anthony Guzzo. And back then, Anthony Guzzo was serving a, print, a prison sentence for five years for assault. I had been away with Anthony prior to this, and he was he was in on a, on a manslaughter charge back then. And this assault was the result of a fight that he had in a, a bar out Patrick Long Island, and he was doing he was serving another five years. Anthony was a guy that was known on the street and in prison. He kind of lived off of the reputation of his brother Vito, and I had wrote about his brother Vito and Vito Guzzo had retaliated against the guys who he believed were involved in his father's death. His father was a member of the Colombo family and he disappeared. He was never seen again on a, on a hunting trip. And Anthony was known to embellish and tell uh, some tall tales at times. And as they say, you know, the prison environment, there's not a lot of things going on. There's not a lot to do. And mostly you have guys that are just passing the time any way they can. Playing cards, uh, reading, watching TV, sp uh, playing sports, and as they say, shooting the shit. Um, Anthony definitely excelled in the later. And you could always count on a good story, or we would say a bullshit story coming out of Anthony. And he was, while he was in Sing Sing, he told a story to his fellow inmates there that he was involved in and received a contract for $250,000 to kill uh, the FBI agent. And what these inmates didn't understand is that the, the mob does not kill FBI agents for obvious reasons. Um, the FBI would obviously come crashing down on them and wipe them out if that was the case. And the second part is that they're not going to put a price tag on something like that. So while Anthony was talking to these group of guys in Sing Sing, what he didn't realize was there was an FBI informant in, in the mix. And um, so this guy, after hearing Anthony talk about this long tale that he told, he went back to his handlers at the FBI and repeated the story. And, you know, obviously they took the threat serious, seriously when it comes to one of their, uh, their agents. And they went into Sing Sing and grabbed Anthony. And Anthony naturally denied the whole thing. And he even volunteered to take a lie detector test and failed, failed the lie detector test. I, I always found it strange that he volunteered to do that. But unfortunately, sometimes people lie and they believe their lies. Well, back then, when this story was taking place in, in Sing Sing, I was still in Fishkill Corrections Facility, and Anthony had left me and gone home and then caught the new bid, the new case, got there for five years, now was serving it in Sing Sing while this was going on, but I never got out. Obviously, I was still, I was still in, in um, Fishkill. And news travels 
quickly. And we had heard this whole story and I figured Anthony was finished at this point. But a while, a little, a couple of days later after this happened, a guy named Frankie Baba came over to me and Frankie used to be the reception area clerk. And he told me that some guy was asking for me, so looking for me. And I asked, I asked him for his name and he gave me his name as an Irish name and I didn't recognize him. And later that day, I took a walk into the mess hall. I really never went to the mess hall too much, but that day I went to the mess hall. I wanted to see the, like they'll say, new jacks, new inmates coming in, coming in. And I spotted him because Frankie Papa told me he's a real big guy. And I had spotted him. And sure enough, it was a guy, big Irish guy, but I didn't know him. Consequently, we had heard that the guy who they were suspecting was a FBI informant in Sing Sing was a very big, big, tall Irish guy. So my antennas went up because this guy had just come in and we had just heard that Anthony just got jammed up in, in uh, Sing Sing. So I went to Frankie and I said to him, I want you to check the chain sheet. And what the chain sheet is, it's a sheet that's in reception that basically tells you the guys that are leaving on transfers and the guys that are coming in on transfers. And specifically, the guys that are coming in on transfers, where are they coming from? Are they coming from Rankers Island? Are they coming from another facility? And in this case, um, he came back to me and he said, the guy came from Sing Sing. So now I knew for sure who the guy was, but now the guy's asking for me. So I turn around and I told Frankie, tell the guy to come out to the, to the yard. Tell him to be out at 7 o'clock, come to the north yard. So we had a court that we made, um, you know, some tables and we all this guy stood and I got these guys together and I sent a message out there. I said, everybody come out at six. And we were talking about this situation. I explained to these guys that um, we were going to, we were going to get this particular guy in, if he came out to the yard. And while, while we were out there, at, it was like about seven o'clock and we, we were going to lure them to like the bathroom area. And, but that, that never happened because at about six 45 that night, a Spanish guy called out to us from the window because the yards, the yard there, the, the facility wraps around the, the, the inside of the yard so that, you know, there's, um, they could open up their windows and they could talk to us. And, he basically called out to us and he told us that he said that three people in civilian clothing um, were filming us through the window with a video camera. We didn't even see it. And anyway, right after he told us that, the announcement boomed over the mic that the seven o'clock yard was now open. So that means that the guys who put down for seven o'clock yard would now be coming out to the yard. And obviously we were out there already. And the first guy out coming running over all excited to us was Frankie Baba. And he ran up to me and he said, something's going on. So I says, what's going on? He said, they, they locked us all in, which meant they made them all go in their cells and locked them in. And because Frankie usually had free range. Uh, he was a, a clerk or something for reception. He was able to walk around, but they told him he could go in. And he said, the big Irishman is gone. He said, I checked the board to see where they moved him. And he said, John, he's gone. So they just packed this guy up and got rid of him. Eventually, Anthony and I made it out to the street. I brought up this whole episode to him. And Anthony's reaction was, I never spoke to this big fuck. So then I said to him, well, Anthony, let me ask you a question. How did he know to come ask for me? And he said, you know, well, how, how should I know? He says, they probably sent them to you like they sent them to me. So nevertheless, I found it strange that he admitted that the FBI sent the guy to him, yet denied speaking to him, said he never spoke to the guy. And the question for me that always remained in the back of my head was 
how did Anthony fa fail a lie detector test and he never got any additional charges and there was no nothing else that was it it was just it just went away his problem just went away he he was transferred to another facility he did his time and basically he he got out and you know and that's when i asked him when we were out on the street what happened but unfortunately anthony was always known to embellish um stories and there's one story that's coming up that i'm going to tell where he he was involved in some embellishment that could have cost us a big problem but i hope that you guys enjoyed the story this was an older one but i'm trying to catch up i'm working on part three of the uh, tony muscatello story it's coming along well uh, like i said i don't know how many parts of that series i'm going to do if you have not subscribed to the this uh podcast sit down news uh click down down below to subscribe thank you and i hope you all have a, have a nice night